My name is Matt Studensky, and I'm one of the medical physicists. I work in the radiation oncology department over at Sylvester, but I'm also involved in the eye plaque treatment planning. So I want to cover four brief points. The first is, what do I do? A little bit of basics on radiation physics and biology. And what I really want to focus on is how we can design and customize plaques for every patient that comes in, and maybe touch a little bit on future research. So what is medical physics? It's basically the marrying of physics and medicine and biology. And me personally, I work in radiation oncology. We also work in radiology, nuclear medicine. Anything that has to do with delivering radiation to humans, that's what our job is. Our job is to make sure that it's done safely, done properly, done efficiently. So with IPLAX, we work as a team. We have the radiation oncologist, we have the medical physicist, and we have the ophthalmologist, and we all come together when we design these IPLAX. So what we're talking about is we're delivering, it's called brachytherapy. We're taking a radioactive source and we're either putting it inside the tumor or very close to the tumor to deliver radiation dose and effectively kill the tumor. And we're talking about electromagnetic radiation and specifically very high energy. These are x-rays and gamma rays. And the light around us is all electromagnetic radiation, but this is actually high enough energy to be able to rip electrons off of atoms. And by doing this, when this radiation comes into your cells, into the nucleus, and this is tumor cells, healthy, healthy cells, it actually can damage the DNA. Sometimes this causes the cell to die, the cell can sometimes repair itself, but what we take advantage of is this is more effective at killing cells that divide quickly. Tumor cells divide very, very quickly, so radiation is very effective at killing tumor cells while still sparing the healthy tissue, which is ideally what we want. So, like Dr. Harbour said, this is the periodic table. What we're using to treat the tumors is iodine. And we actually use a very special kind of iodine. You've probably all seen the periodic table, maybe not so much the chart of nuclides. And what this is along every row is one, one specific element. And down the center, you have your stable elements. But as you get towards the edge of this, these, these atoms aren't so happy. They don't want to be there. They want to be running right down the middle. And they want to give up energy to be able to get to these stable states. So if we zoom in a bit and zoom in a little bit more, we can see along a row, there's our iodine. So this is what we're using to treat these tumors. And specifically, we're using iodine-125, which means we have 125 neutrons and protons inside this specific atom of iodine. And it's not very happy in this state. And it wants to drop down to something that's more stable. And in doing this, it actually releases energy. And that's our gamma ray that we use to kill the tumor cell and destroy the cancer. So what we do is we take this iodine 125 and we can place it inside a seed. And this is actually the seeds we use when we design our eye plaques. They're about five millimeters long, about one millimeter in diameter. And there's our iodine 125 and it's encapsulated in titanium. And what we can do now is what we're looking at are our standard comms plaques. Dr. Harbour mentioned the comms, the, the trial. These are our historic plaques and we still use them today because they're very effective. And what they are is they're actually like a silicon-based material that we can add all these seeds inside. I don't know if you can see the little slots, but the seeds, those radioactive seeds, sit inside this material, and they go inside this gold plaque. And the reason we put a gold plaque on there is this radiation is being emitted in all directions. We really want it to go just into the tumor. So when we put this gold backing on this plaque, you can see that it forces all the radiation to go up into the tumor and it spares everything else around the tumor and protects everything else. So this is the, the theory behind using these, these gold back plaques. So with comms plaques, depending on the size of the tumor, we need to be able to treat different tumors. Again, we need to customize this for every patient. We have different diameter plaques. They range from 10 millimeters up to 22 millimeters. And these all have a prearranged seed location. So this helps us again with our, with our dose calculation and figuring out where this dose is going. And we can also have notch plaques. So some of the tumors are very posterior, they're next to the nerve. And by having a notch in the plaque, this allows us to position the plaque a little bit closer to the tumor and again deliver the dose to the tumor that we need to. So what we now have is a piece of software called the plaque simulator. This was developed over years at the University of Southern California and we've recently got this software, we've commissioned it. And what this allows us to do is it really allows us to customize the plaque for every patient. So the goal again is to deliver a very high dose to the tumor, but we don't want a high dose to go to the optic nerve, the macula. Dr. Harbour talked about all the complications that can arise 
from the radiation damage. So we want to keep the radiation away from those areas and give it just to the tumor. And that starts off with, for us, is getting all that imaging that you guys come in for. You have your ultrasound image. We have our fundus photos. That's just a, basically a digital image right down through your eye. And we can get a lot of information from this. We can get tumor dimensions. We can get the location of the tumor relative to the optic nerve and the structures that we're trying to spare. We can also get three-dimensional imaging. We'll get a CT image. We'll get an MRI image. And from that, we can start to reconstruct the eye for every patient in three dimensions. So in the software, we throw all these images in there. And what we start to do is now customize this for each specific patient. And this model allows us to shrink and contract and stretch the eye so this matches the exact eye of the patient. And we can build a nice three-dimensional model. So once we have this three-dimensional model of the eye, we can start to build the model of the tumor as well. So we take a three-dimensional eye, we can unfold it, and we can get what's called a retinal diagram. And now we can start dropping the other imaging that we have on top of this retinal diagram. So we have our tumor, we have our optic nerve, and once we have this information, we can start to model our tumor as well. We can change the diameter, we can change the height, so we can exactly model each patient's tumor in their exact eye, which gives us now a lot of power to customize the plan. What we also do is we add a little bit of margin to the tumor as well. This give, accounts for any uncertainty that we have, and it guarantees that we're gonna get the full dose to the whole tumor, and we're not gonna miss any part of the tumor when we do this treatment. So you can see once we have that information, now we've got a three-dimensional tumor, our three-dimensional eye model. Now we just need to figure out where are we gonna put the plaque? How are we going to position it? So you can see now in three dimensions, we have an idea where the tumor is. Now we can start to pick the right size plaque. We can move the plaque where we need to. And this software also helps us, us guide where we're going to actually suture the plaques. And we can go in there, we can maybe avoid some muscles. We can, we can really, again, customize this for every patient that comes in. And the last step we need to do now is now that we have the right plaque size, we know where the tumor is, we know how big it is, we know where it is in relationship to the rest of the critical structures, is we need to figure out how much activity, how, how many of those sources and how strong do those sources need to be to get the prescription dose to the whole tumor. So the way we do it is we need to prescribe 85 gray to the tumor. That's our prescription dose. We want the whole tumor to get 85 gray. This will be enough to, to kill all the cells. We prescribe that to either the apex of the tumor, so the highest point of the tumor, or maybe even a little beyond that tumor if we think there might be some cells still hanging on out there. And these plaques, this is delivered over three days. So you're in the hospital for the three days, and this whole time, radiation is being delivered. And over the course of the three days, we will deliver the full 85 gray to the tumor. So once we tell the system how far we need to uh, get the dose pushed away from the plaque, it'll let us know what, to, what sort of seeds do we need, how much activity do each of these sources need to be. And once we have that information, we can actually calculate where the dose is going to go in three dimensions. So we have our three-dimensional eye model, we have our three-dimensional tumor model, our three-dimensional plaque, and now we can start making sure that these isodose lines, so each of those is a different dose level as you go farther away from the plaque, you're down to your 30 gray, and there's our prescription dose of 85 gray. We can look on all our images and make sure that our full tumor is being covered by the prescription dose. And we can also look at our critical structures like the optic nerve to make sure they're not getting too much dose. We can look at this in three dimensions. And again, you can see there's our three-dimensional tumor, there's our plaque, and you can see our, our isodose lines, in this case, giving the full dose to the tumor like we want to. So we can also quantify this a little bit more to make sure we really have fully optimized this plan as much as we can. So what this is called is a dose area histogram. So we've taken all the, the, the tumor, which is this brown line, the green line, which is our tumor plus margin, and all our critical structures, so our optic nerve, our macula, the areas that we don't want to get dose. And what this is showing us is the dose on the bottom, on this axis here, and on this axis, we have the percentage of that structure that's getting covered. So in this case, we want our tumor and margin to at least get 85 gray, and we can see that actually 100% is getting more than 85 gray. So in this case, we know we have tumor coverage, and what this also shows us 
is here's our optic nerve down here getting less than 50 rays, so that's ideal. What we want to see, all our critical structures down here getting almost no dose with great coverage to the tumor. And really, this helps us, again, what I said, optimize the plan. So let's say, hypothetically, we had shifted the plaque slightly. We can see now, here's our tumor is only getting 75% covered. So in this case, we would have to go back, maybe move the plaque around a little bit, maybe change some of the seeds, maybe try a different size plaque, because not only are we not getting the coverage that we need to the tumor, we're not getting the full dose, but at the same time, we're giving a very high dose to the macula. So again, these are things we look at, and using this information, we can really customize and optimize the plaque. And the ways we can do that are, we can maybe try a different plaque. So instead of using a standard round comms plaque, maybe try a notched plaque, especially for tumors that are right up next to the optic nerve. What we can also do is we can change the activity of the sources. So let's say we've got the, the plaque positioned perfectly where we want and we're still missing a little bit of coverage. We can see from our dose area histogram that we're not getting 100% coverage. We can increase the activity of a source next to that and be able to push the dose where we want to. Or let's say we're too close to the optic nerve and the optic nerve is getting too much dose. We can reduce the activity of the sources near there and pull the isodose lines away from those critical structures. So another freedom that this software gives us is it gives us freedom to move away from comms plaques and do more exotic type plaques. These are called eye physics plaques. The main difference is instead of having the sources in this elastic silicon material, these sources actually sit in the, the gold plaque itself in these grooves. So the advantage of that is this helps direct the radiation more, again, into the tumor and not to the surrounding structures. And you can see that here. With a comms plaque, these lower dose isodose lines spill out a little bit more. See, they, they fall out laterally, whereas with the high physics plaque, it's much steeper. You can also see the effect on these higher isodose lines. They're much more directed directly into the tumor versus the comms plaques that sort of spread, spread everything around. The eye physics plaques are also a little thinner, which allow maybe for easier implantation sometimes. The one downside of the eye physics plaques is they don't allow you as many places to actually suture to the eye, so there's a little bit more uncertainty there. The eye physics plaques also come in different designs. Instead of just a, a circle with a notch, now we can do maybe longer, more elongated plaques, and we also have the freedom to maybe only load half the plaque. If this is a smaller tumor, we need to get around the optic nerve. We now have the freedom to see what our dose distribution is going to look like with all these different plaque designs. And with this new software, this gives us a lot more freedom. Like Dr. Harb was saying, there's clinical trials for our immunotherapy. We can also do clinical trials in terms of our dosing. Maybe we can lower the dose, which helps us to reduce the dose to our critical structures. Now with this software, we have more freedom to, to play around with different things and moving forward, investigate different possibilities, different ways of planning. And again, our whole goal is to be able to customize each plaque for every patient that comes in. So that's all I have. Any questions? Yes. I had uh, a different procedure where I actually uh, had the plaque inserted. I had a leg shield and I had a home for five days and I got back. Right. So, so how would that go? How would that compare right. Same principle. If we wanted to, we could leave the plaque in for five days. We would just reduce the activity of the sources. The difference is depending on who, someone has to be responsible for the radioactive material. And you are able to leave the hospital. We don't do it here because if something were to happen to the plaque when you're away from the hospital, they, the government takes that kind of stuff very seriously. Yeah, exactly. So what we do here is we shorten the amount of time, but we keep you in the hospital. So we do three days here instead of five. But same, same principle. Um, oh, another question? Just, just a quick question. Yeah. Uh, the software is used throughout the country now, would you say, on every plaque? It's not on every plaque. It's becoming more and more widespread. It's trying to become commercialized. It's actually going through FDA approval right now. Um, but no, not everyone has it. Everyone has their own way of doing it. But again, we, we, want, we felt this software gave us a lot more freedom, a lot more ability to do things that we wanted to do. So. Great, so. Um, so